Hello. I received questions about the use of rubber dam in endodontics and restorative dentistry. And so I have decided in answering many of these questions to put together a series of short videos about the subject. Today I'm going to talk about an extremely interesting article which I read recently, written by Dr. Terence Embry and colleagues from the University of Virginia. They did a survey of doctors working in restorative or operative dentistry in the intramural practice. This is faculty working on private patients in that university. And the, the doctors over there are basically prosthodontists and general dentists doing on, only operative dentistry, class two, class three composites, and you know, different restorative procedures. So they had prosthodontists and general practitioners. The most interesting thing about it, about the study, that the percentage of utilization of rubber dam by the faculty, the intramural faculty on their practice day is 30%. And in some instances with GP went down to 20% utilization of rubber dam. And how did they measure that by documentation? Apparently, whatever you do in your electronic record, you have to write, I placed a rubber dam, I did uh, cotton roll isolation, etc. So basically they sent in a questionnaire and then they went to the electronic record and examined the procedures. The most interesting thing about it is that the faculty who is supposed to be teaching restorative dentistry and proper isolation, especially when you're using adhesive dentistry, themselves are not using the rubber dam in their procedures, which as an endodontist, which really made me an absolutely astonished, okay, that they had nine pulp exposures and they did pulp capping okay this is an operative restorative dentistry and they did not use a rubber dam this this means a lot to me it means to me that restorative dentists in general okay i'm talking about general education international okay they perceive pulp capping exposure as a restorative procedure it's not it's an endodontic procedure and the standard of care for endodontics is to use a rubber dam. Every examination in the United States, every state, okay, every state exam requires the use of rubber dam. Every government agency, if you're working in the military, in the government, different agency in the United States, they require the rubber dam use. Even here in the in the uh, Saudi Arabia. You know, we, we observed in some studies that the people who use rubber dam most are usually doctors working in the government clinics and government hospitals, government centers providing dentistry. So, so as I have stated, pulp capping, pulponomy, direct pulp capping, indirect pulp capping, these are endodontic procedures. You must consider them as surgical procedures and they were not used. So how do we expect the generation of dentists we are producing in these different institutions if the faculty themselves do not believe in the use of rubber dam in their operative dentistry? And there is no question about it, that we need it today. We need the rubber dam in operative dentistry today more than ever because of what? We need moisture-free composite dentistry, adhesive dentistry, specifically in the class two and class three procedures, specifically when you're doing post buildups, fiber posts, etc. You need the moisture-free field. And in the past, you know, I myself, when I went to USC, 
I had to do the California boards and I did gold foil and I had to learn a full application of a rubber dam. We had to isolate every single tooth in vagination the gingiva using heavy rubber dam because we want no moisture. The gold foil at that time will never, never adhere to dentin unless you do that. And today with composite dentistry, which is the greatest advances in dentistry, okay, we need bonding. And if you don't do a proper bonding, you're going to have micro leakage. And micro leakage, you're going to have bacteria. And you're going to have recurrent caries. And you're going to have all bunch of failures of your composite dentistry, okay, which is supposed to last much longer. Okay, so I wanted to start with that. And it's extremely interesting study. I loved it. Okay, and one of the interesting thing about it, they found that the dentists who are faculty with a military background, okay, prosthodontist or general practitioner, they use the rubber dam. They believe it was or it is the standard of care. Okay, and in subsequent presentation, I will talk about reasons why people do not use it. And then I will talk about the reasons why we should use it. And then I will focus on myself. Why do I use it? And then hopefully somewhere in my website, we're gonna, you're going to have a technique. What I have done, I simplified the procedure so it will be available for every practitioner in a matter of seconds. And the more we do it, the easier it becomes. Thank you for listening.